it doesn't matter which liturgical year we're in, Advent A, B, or C, the first Sunday of Advent, the preacher always gets these awesome and lovely texts about the end of the world <laughs> and destruction. For two weeks, we have to sit through this while our sanctuary is all nicely decorated and we're hearing Christmas carols and Macy's is telling us about the parade and we're all waiting for it to snow. We have to sit through this. The end of the world, signs of destruction, and then if that's not fun enough, next week we get John the Baptist standing in the wilderness saying, repent for the forgiveness of sin. Merry Christmas. <laughs> but it's Advent. It's that time of year where we are shaken and dissonant. And every year I know it's coming. And I groan, just like you, when I have to preach these texts. I want to be happy and festive. I want to get to Christmas and filling the manger and the fun songs, but... It's Advent. It's time to wait. And I confess, I really stink at waiting. My wife and my girls will tell you it's the worst thing that I probably do. I don't want to sit here this time of year and, and forget about the happiness of Thanksgiving and the fun times we had. And I don't want to forget about all the glorious things and dive into these dark texts. And then on top of that, God sends us a friendly reminder of this beautiful weather of rain and snow and ice to go with the text about the end of the world and the second coming of Jesus Christ. And our sanctuaries, as you heard in the lovely children's message, are beautifully decorated. Yet here again, we're talking about signs and portents, earthquakes, and all sorts of things that just don't seem like they go with this season. But I'm here, as the text reminds us, to say that it is not Christmas. It is Advent. There's a disconnect between what the world wants us to be doing right now and what our spiritual hearts are called to be doing right now in these precious Sundays of Advent. In the midst of all the holiday hubbub, in the midst of all the sales and everything, we're called to this place this morning for a few Sundays to talk about those things that wake us up, that scare us, that freak us out. We're called to come here and hear about the words like Jesus says about the second coming, about the promises of God's future. And still, I'm standing here talking to you this morning and I'd rather be on my couch escaping in the dreams of turkey comas, thinking about festive and fun things, watching football and thinking about presents and candy, but we're here in Advent waiting. And so this morning, I've given up and maybe you have too, that it's time to just let go, open our hearts to God, and embrace the season of Advent. Know that we'll sing the songs in minor keys, that we have to wait to sing joy to the world because Jesus isn't born yet. And listen for the words that God is sounding to us. That maybe like those angels on the tree, we'll hear the trumpet blast and we'll be jarred awake to say, holy cow, God, I'm paying attention. I'm ready to listen. And that's what this season is all about. So in the midst of the irony that this is the busiest season of our lives, we are called to take time to wait. Wait for the advent of God. And as I mentioned earlier, and we laughed about it, but it's true, the text and scriptures for this time of year are difficult and jarring. Earlier in the 21st chapter of Luke, and I think you heard my friend Landon talk to you about it, the temple was the text. And Jesus was talking about tearing it all down, that everything has come crashing down. He begins talking about the kingdom of God, and here today we get those lovely words. There'll be signs in the heaven, there'll be distress among the nations, there'll be roaring of seas and waves. People will faint from foreboding and fear of what's coming on the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. They will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and glory. Not exactly holiday text. You see, for millennia, we as church people have been struggling with this tension and fear between the end of the world and this second coming of Christ. Religious leaders have used this fear and fed people and used it as a motivation for them to live a certain way lest they get their due, to believe a certain way. And none of us have done a good job of heeding the words that Jesus says in the text this morning when he said, do not be afraid when the end is near. Do not be afraid of the second coming. Now, it's helpful to know just a little bit of history here that Luke is writing this text in the midst of the times in which Jerusalem is being ransacked by the Romans. 
Nations were fighting nations, and the world around Luke was falling apart. And here Jesus reminds his followers of what will befall them in the future. He foretells the foreboding destruction of the temples. He talks about all the things that they are coming. And it's a difficult text for them. But we understand that Jesus is telling them this not to scare them, but to give them hope so that the words that we heard from Jeremiah, that hope about a better kingdom, might ring true to them. Jesus is giving this to them as something to carry with them in the midst of the dark times. And even though they live through the times of persecution and hardship, they have the faith, they have this promise to hold on to that this is not all there is to wait for. Jesus tells the people, truly I tell you, generations will not pass away until these things have happened. But here we are, 2,000 plus years later, several generations, waiting for these things to happen. Just like last year and the year before and the year before that and the year before that, going for thousands of years, we light this candle, we listen to these texts, and we pray for the coming of Jesus' kingdom we pray for that day when we might see these signs of power and glory, and we wait for the promises and the hope of God's grace. But I want to argue that maybe if we stop in the busyness of our lives and we think for a minute and we listen, that these things have come to pass. That Advent is the time that reminds us that God is the already, the not yet, that God has broken into this place. That when we celebrate the birth of the Christ child, we are reminded that God has been in this world and continues to be in this world each and every day. That generations after generations have had the gift of the Holy Spirit and the presence of God among us. And that we have not been simply abandoned to the powers of this world or to the powers of fear of death and destruction. Just like Israel, our redemption is near even though it feels like that manger is empty the presence of God's grace and glory is right here. Nations might rise against nation, and the followers of Christ might experience pain and growth in their faith, but they have never been alone. They have never been abandoned. Just as then, the words of Jesus are our hope now in this time, that our redemption is at hand, that we are not simply waiting for nothing. But how different, really, how different was Jesus' time from our time. Wars, insurrections, nations fighting nations, famine, plague, earthquake. Let's take a look at our newspaper in the last month. Gun violence, famine, plague, war, terrorism, death, disease, destruction. We too live in that time of chaos that Luke talks about. The truth is every age experiences this turmoil of war, conflict, destruction, every age yearns and aches for the hope, waits for the hope of peace promised to us in Jesus. And yet it is that in the midst of this chaos, every year we gather here because we believe in that promise. We cling fast to the promise of that hope. We wait intentionally for God. We know that the chaos and the terror are realities, but they are not the end of the story. We don't need to be scared. We don't need to be forced. We simply just need to be awake and listening. As Jesus said in his own words, today's trouble is enough for today. So this Advent, we are waiting, waiting patiently and difficultly for the coming of our Lord to finally usher in that age of hope and peace, that new promise of a place where death will no longer be here, where mourning and crying and pain will be gone. We recognize that God is in our midst in the midst of this kingdom, that God is here and present right now. During this time of Advent, we're called to wait to anticipate the Lord's coming and to celebrate that incarnation in Jesus Christ, to realize and celebrate the kingdom in all its fullest, and to realize that the future promise is right here with us. And as the candle reminds us today, we are a people of hope. And while we wait for the coming of the Lord, we're not just simply waiting for the end of times. In the midst of our tragedy, our destruction and despair, we're not simply hoping for hope's sake, we're hoping for a reality. For we look for the coming of our Lord in our own hearts, knowing that God's here, and Advent says all we have to do is pay attention. And here's where it gets really difficult. 
here's where the waiting becomes something other than watching the clock and flipping the calendar and paying attention at the stores, 33, 32, 31 more days of shopping. This is where we have to flip our advent calendars to start thinking about what are we called to do in this time of waiting? Because I think this is exactly what Jesus is getting at in the text. We are not simply to sit waiting piously with our hands folded and our heads bowed. We're not simply supposed to lock our doors and sit in our houses and wait for the second coming of Jesus and everything will be okay. Advent waiting means that we realize we live in a world that needs hands and feet to take the message of the gospel out. Advent waiting means that we are alert, we are awake, we are active. You remember in the text it says don't be caught by dissipation or drunkenness or be disturbed. What the text is reminding us is, is don't let anything in the world take our preparation away from waiting from God, but also get off our butts and go do stuff. Go out there in the world and feed the hungry, fight for justice, stand up for the oppressed. Go out there and be what God's kingdom is. Go out there and do things. That's the trick about Advent and waiting. We tend to want to sit and wait. But God calls us to go out there and wait by doing things, by being active in the world, by being the signs of God's presence and Christ's love in the world. So we live in this tension between waiting and acting and doing, between a God who is here and a God who is yet to come back. And that, that tension, that oddness, that weirdness, just like the difference between shopping and church, that is Advent time. That is the Advent waiting. And so now, as we prepare our hearts for these next couple of weeks, as the darkness of the days grow longer, the light and brightness of the candle of Christ grows brighter. And that's what we mean when we talk about waiting for Advent. That's what we mean when we hope for the coming of the Lord. That's what we mean that we won't be afraid or scared by the signs. But we'll look for the signs of love and peace and hope and grace. So as we watch, as we wait, as we pray for the coming Lord, a baby born long ago and a God of power here amongst us this morning, may we be alert, may we stay awake, may we see the signs that are coming, even as we stand up and say together and pray together with new fervor and hearts, come thou long expected Jesus. That's what waiting's for, that's what Advent's for. Thanks be to God.